go ahead and move on to the A7R2. This is my first experience with any kind of full frame camera. And you know, the grip uh, is even a little bit beefier than the one on the 6500. But right away, the thing that stood out to me was the extra sliders. Um, you see there's one here on the front, one on the back, uh, exposure compensation here on the right side. And you still have this dial here, which I'm not really sure what you can use it for, but you also have a C3, C4. Um, there's a lot of extra custom buttons. Um, so from an ergonomics perspective, this is much more in line uh, with what I'd want to shoot with. Um, other things that I noticed about the camera, um, back button focus was actually the same as the A6500, uh, pretty useful, um, not too hard to reach, you don't have to move too far. The video button on both cameras I found pretty terrible, uh, almost impossible to find unless you're looking at the actual camera. Um, and frankly, these dials, they weren't great either. This dial is pretty recessed. It's hard to get to. Um, I guess the flip side is you don't bump it accidentally. Um, even this dial is kind of so recessed that sometimes I can't find it versus the, the on-off button. After two full days of shooting, I started to get comfortable with it. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to see that in some of the shots. Um, you know, the real things that stood out for me with this camera, I loved the 85 Battis. I was actually a little surprised how slow it was, and maybe I'm totally off base, but I felt that the Battis was faster on the 6500. So I really love that combination, and I actually love sh this shooting a little bit, uh, like a longer field of view. And um, I also really liked the 28 millimeter full frame on, actually that was probably my favorite lens to shoot on the, the A7R2. Um, I don't need the 20, the 42 megapixels, um, so the resolution is really just unnecessary for me, but I liked the focusing. I uh, wasn't blown away by the focusing, not like the OMD EM1 Mark II, which was super, super fast. I, um, but I didn't notice, and so I walked away uh, thinking if I switch right now to the A7R2 from my current OMD EM5 that uh, from a focusing perspective, it'd be at least as fast. Um, the The thing that really stood out was kind of the the things you could do with the files, and so hopefully I'll I'll cut that later into the video in terms of shadow recovery, highlight recovery, uh, cropping, in particular. Um, other things that I liked about these cameras, um, I love that you can charge them um, externally, so you can just plug a device like this one. I think it's the the Jackery um, bolt, and there's actually a cable built in for the iPod and another micro USB cable, so you can carry this around. Um, I didn't really try to attach it to the camera. I'm sure there are that some that can or can mount to the bottom with a tripod mount, uh, but didn't really attempt that. The other thing is the battery. So I, I heard a lot about people talking about battery life. Um, these are the, the little dinky batteries. And, you know, I didn't have a problem. Maybe that's because I'm coming from the Olympus OMD world where almost every shot I just kind of instinctively flip the camera on and off to save battery power. Uh, but I think I got four or 500 shots at least out of every battery before I went back and had to recharge. I had two batteries, one for each, and then a third one as a backup that came from lens rental, um, but I never really ran out or even had to switch batteries. I never made it past uh, one battery for each, and I shot at least for a couple hours today. So maybe it's just I got used to it from shooting with the OMD. The SD card slot, uh, would have loved to see that be two SD cards, um, especially at this price point for the camera. Um, now for the LCD on the back, both of them are the same. I actually love this angle because I don't shoot myself doing a lot of video. I mostly kind of handhold and shoot looking down. Um, 
which the videos that pop out from the side or the LCD screens that kind of pop out this way, the new ones that Olympus does, don't allow you to do that anymore. Um, so, you know, we'll see if everybody's heading that direction because people want to have selfie cams or, or do vlogging. But I, I thought this was perfect. It was fairly easy to just pop up with my thumb and then I could shoot like this uh, on the street fairly easy from a distance. So I liked, I liked that. Um, and I think that's about it. Nothing else to say. Let's switch things up and see how this um, camera or see what kind of footage this camera can produce. I'm just doing kind of a handheld pan of video. Um, and you can see the IBIS makes it somewhat stable, but nothing like what you would get from an Olympus or say a Panasonic. Uh, decent enough if you really kind of brace yourself to get a handheld pan. Um, this one's even a little bit shakier because it's shot with the 85 millimeter, uh, so the longer focal length makes it even harder to to stay stable. Um, I would test a lot of these cameras to try to see um, how stable they are when walking. Um, I think that kind of really puts the most stress on the stabilization. There you can see the footage from the GoPro and kind of how I was holding the A7R2. And now you can see the footage from the A7R2 while walking. Um, you know, it's not terrible. Um, it'll do in kind of uh, when nothing, when you have no other option. Um, but I'll actually post a sample of the EM1 Mark II from Olympus. And that thing really looks like a glide cam compared to this. So yeah, handheld walking, um, passable if you really, really don't have any other options, but I don't think the uh, IBIS and the Sony's is really ready for uh, lots of video use without a monopod or tripod. Next, let's get into some still shots. Here's a couple of uh, interesting shots I was able to get. I think a couple of, most of these were shot in Chinatown. And here um, are some shots where you can see the raw file um, and then you can see the edited file um, which really gives you an idea of how malleable these files are both from a cropping perspective and from raising the shadows. You can literally recover almost completely missed shots so it gives you a lot more leeway in your photography and uh, frankly it kind of allows you to be sloppy but still get interesting shots from it. Um, overall I think the camera was incredible for stills um, especially just when you see what you can do with the raw files.